Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Kemi, and this is Sincerely KS Soul. Thank you so much for joining me again today. We're going to go into Pride and Prejudice, the series from 1995. You guys have been screaming from the rooftop for me to do this series. You wanted me to watch it ever since I did the first reaction for Pride and Prejudice. You enjoyed it so much. I read your comments, so many comments. You wanted me to watch this one and you heck, you have to watch it. It's amazing. It's this, it's that, 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 that. And I said, okay, I have to watch it because the people have spoken. They want me to see it and I want to deliver on your needs. So this will be my first time watching the series with Colin Firth, but not my first time knowing about the storyline. Okay. All right. If you're new here, please know that I have the full reaction um, videos to all my reactions over on Patreon. I hope that you consider joining me over there. If you're unable to, I appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you so much for being part of this family. Over on Patreon, the first tier gets animation, second tier gets animation and TV series, third tier gets animation, TV series and movies. The fourth tier gets you all the above including a specific film reaction request. Um, also know that as a Patreon, whatever tier you're, you get access to the community polls, you get access to the community chat rooms. Over there, we've got four parts. We've got mental health, we've got um, patron only, where I'm not allowed to go in because patrons have their own private discussion and room to talk about film reactions they might be planning for me. Um, there's another one where we talk about intimacy. <laughs> we share pictures, book recipes, and there's a patron and me. So if you want to ask me something one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, fine. Right. Um, so I do hope that you consider being part of the family and enjoying what we, what I, the world I've created there. It's uh, we're a very kind bunch and helpful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm excited to get into it. And I will be, I received a prop for, for Iman. Iman requested that I watch Sense and Sensibility. Uh, she sent me things. I have the unboxing video for what she sent me, but um, I have my fan here available for it, just in case I need it. And I have, I, I'm so proud of the gifts she sent me, actually. I want to I wanna show it again. Um, the unboxing video will be put up and she sent me the full work for Jane Austen a book. Um, I love books but you know because I use glasses please know in future that the smaller the print the more difficult it is. I don't like wearing my glasses to read books I take them out and when the print is so small but I appreciate this and I will read it nonetheless even if my eyes be damned. <laughs> and then she sent me tea her name is Iman but her YouTube channel name is Red Honey Tea and she sent me a tea bag all I have to do is add honey to that and guess what else she sent me she sent me a tea cup <laughs> and a saucer See, yellow, 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 yellow. So that's what I received. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. It's very thoughtful of you. Thank you. And your penmanship is beautiful. You have such a lovely handwriting. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Oh, it's nothing to Pembley, I know. But I must settle somewhere. Okay. I shall close with the attorney directly. Oh, really? Is that how we just... Not Mama. I shall hurt Mama. I beg you would turn this over. It's... Oh, let her have it, Kitty. <laughs> Netherfield Park is let at last! 
Yes. Is it? Yes, it is. For I have just Never. had it from Mrs. Long. And do you not want to know who has taken it? Uh, you want to tell me, and I have no objection to hearing it. Why, then, it is taken <laughs> by a young man of large fortune from the north of England. <laughs> <laughs> what a fine thing for our girls. How so? Um, how can it affect them? For a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. <laughs> so that is his design in settling here, to marry one of our daughters. Design? Oh, how can you talk such nonsense? But you know he may very likely fall in love with one of them. Therefore, you must visit him directly he comes. Visit him? Oh, no, no. I see no occasion for that. Mr. Bennett! Go yourself with the girls. Or, still better, send them by themselves. By themselves? Aye, for you're as handsome as any other Mr. Bingley might like you best. Oh, Mr. Bennett says he will not visit Mr. Bingley when he comes. And you know that your father has a will of iron. You're in the right, my dear. And he's welcome to any of them that he chooses. There, what will do? No, no, I beg you will not write at all if you... You don't <laughs> know what I suffer. Well, I hope you will get over it and live to... Oh, if only we'd been able to have sons. Misfortunes, we are told, are sent to test our fortitude and may often reveal themselves as blessings in disguise. Misfortunes are sent to us as blessings in disguise. That's a good one. Who would love me enough to take me for a mere 50 pounds a year? But such a man could hardly be sensible, and you know I could never love a man who was out of his wits. Where either partner cannot love or respect the other. One of us at least will have to marry very well. I should so much like to marry for love. And so you shall. But nothing but the very deepest love will induce me into matrimony. My head is very ill tonight. <laughs> Lizzie! <laughs> Wait till you hear our news! What should we care for Mr Bingley since we are never to be acquainted with him? Handsome and wears a blue coat. And he declared to Sir William that he loves his... Oh, Lydia, I beg you would stop! For we are never to know Mr Bingley... ...known as much this morning, I should never have called on him. Oh? You have called on him! <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid we cannot escape the acquaintance now. <laughs> Mr. Bennett. Oh, my dear Miss the Joke. <laughs> oh, but now you shall all dance with Mr. Bing. <laughs> shall we be quite safe here, Mr. Bing? Allow me the pleasure of welcoming you to our little assembly here. Well, there's nothing that I love better than a country dance. <laughs> As I understand, one of them is married to the gentleman there, a Mr. Hurst. Lizzie, Jane, come here. Hold me, he's Mr. Bingley's oldest friend. His name is Darcy. Bingley's wealth is nothing to his. Ten thousand a year at oh. least. Lizzie, oh Lord, they're coming over. Smile, girl, smile. <laughs> this is Jane, my eldest. And Elizabeth, you like to dance yourself. There is nothing I love better, madam. <laughs> and may I be so bold as to claim the next two dances? Oh, I beg your pardon. Mrs. Bennett, may I present my friend? It has? <laughs> Not if I can help Thank you. Thank you, madam. I rarely dance. All such pretty partners. Oh, he walked away. Oh, my God. He just stepped away. Don't ever meet such a proud, disagreeable man. Ma, he will leave you. Uh, no, indeed. Quite ill favoured. <laughs> Certainly nothing at all to Mr. Bingley. <laughs> oh, she's spoiling his reputation. <laughs> she's gone to the streets to tell everyone Mr. Darcy's devilish. <laughs> Mm 
<laughs> Colin Firth is the he did really good in um, Bridget Jones' Diary. I liked. Katie and Lydia, they are so fond of dancing, and so they are when their mother is to be had. We shall have to be philosophers. I certainly shall not. But the assembly such as this. It would be in support. You know, perfectly well, it would be a punishment to me to stand up with any other woman in the room. Good God, Darcy, I wouldn't be as fastidious as you are for a kingdom. Upon my honor. I never met so many pleasant girls in my life. You have been dancing with the only handsome girl in the room. And I dare say, very agreeable. She is tolerable. Bingley, I'm in no humor to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. Plus, Go back to your partner. Enjoy her smiles. You're wasting your time. Slighted by other men. Oh my god. So this one has been forsaken by other men, so I might as well give her audience. He's not going to do that. Oh. And she walked right past him and smiled. I'm not going to give audience to a girl who has been slighted by other men. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm so fucked. And Lydia and I dance. Every dance. And Mary none. <laughs> and Mary none. And Mr. B. But lo, no, <laughs> there in the very next, nothing would please him but to stand. His partners. Woody had sprained his ankle in the first dance. Oh, and his sister. Dare say the lace on Mrs. Hurst's gown. No, no lace. Room. No lace, Mrs. Bennet, I beg you. Mr. Darcy, as he calls himself, is not worth our concern. Or Lizzie, you know. <laughs> and flatly refused to stand up with her. Another time, Lizzie, I would not dance with him if he should ask you. Oh. I believe, ma'am, I may safely promise you never to dance with Mr. Darcy. And so none of the Hertfordshire ladies could please you, Mr. Darcy? Eldest Miss Bennet is, I grant you, very pretty. A fine concession. Come, man, admit it. She's an angel. She smiles too much. Oh, Jane Bennet <laughs> is a sweet girl. Too much. The mother. Oh, it's such a horsey. That's too cruel. <laughs> Never understand why you are in such a rage to approve of everything and everyone that you meet. You see, Mr. Darcy, we are not afraid of you. I would not have you. He's just what a young man ought to be, Lizzie. Sensible. No, I give you leave to like him. You've liked many <laughs> I give you leave to like him. At first, perhaps. But after a while, I found them very pleasing. And even Mr. Darcy, you know, may improve on closer acquaintance. Like she it, is man. tolerable, I suppose. <laughs> but, oh, look, Charlotte has come. I like her disposition with regards to this because... Honestly, those words were scathing and it could have really bothered her, right? Made her feel inadequate or less than. But she took it with, oh well. The lodge will be graced with your presence. Here, you see, we're all easy. With no My dear, 5,000 a year. <laughs> Don't think of wealth. Why is she talking to p about people's wealth in public? That isn't nice. You don't do that, like Mrs. Bennet. Pleased with heart for Chuck Colonel Forster. Very much so, Lady Lucas, and ever more so than the. <laughs> no doubt you attend assemblies at St James's Court, Miss Bingley. We go but rarely, sir. I should be happy to introduce you there. You know, at any time when I'm in town. Poor Darcy, what agonies he must be suffering. <laughs> Sir, or do you defend Hertfordshire against the French? Neither, ma'am, I trust. Ah, uh, little <laughs> Sanderson, I knew you would. Make him give a ball, Mrs. Foster. <laughs> oh, play a jig, Mary. No one wants your concertos here. Oh. Mary, but let us oblige them this once, eh? For there is no one here who plays as well as you. Oh. Very well. <laughs> Though you know it gives me little pleasure. I see that Mr. Bingley continues his attentions to Jane, Lizzie. And Mr. Bingley, do you think he is in love? It is clear that he likes her very much. Then she should leave him in no doubt of her heart. She should show more affection, even than she feels, not less, if she is to... Before she is sure of his character, before she's even certain of her own regard for him. And it is better to know in advance as little as possible of the defects of your marriage. Or his friend. 
said I wish you would come into society. Savage can dance. Oh my god, every Ooh. savage. Oh quite... my god. Oh, I think I should speak to my sister before she exposes us all to ridicule. Right? Who put, tried to touch her ribbon? Why are you not dancing, Mr. Darcy? A lot of beauty is before you. Indeed, sir. I've not the least intention of dancing. I would be very happy if you would do me the honor of dancing with me, Miss Bennett. What? I'm not inclined to dance. Oh, come, come, why not? Well, uh, oh, capital idiot! Well, she didn't tell him why. She just said she wouldn't dance. Oh. <laughs> I believe I can guess your thoughts at this moment. I should imagine not. <laughs> you are thinking... No. no, indeed, my mind was more agreeably engaged. Agreeably I've been meditating engaged. on the very great pleasure which a pair of fine eyes in the face of a pretty woman can bestow. Oh. And may one dare ask, whose are the eyes that inspired these reflections? Miss Elizabeth Bennet. What happened in 10 seconds? <laughs> oh, he just looked at her eyes. What happened in 24 hours? It is from Miss Bingley. Oh. Oh, well, that is a good sign, too. As the gentlemen are to dine with the officers. Oh, that's unlucky. The carriage? No, indeed. You must go on horseback. For it looks like rain, then you will have to stay the night. <laughs> Mother! No, indeed. You will go on, Nelly. That will do very well indeed. The rain has brought a, a lot of couples together. Jane Austen couples together. <laughs> it is all exactly as I planned. And Mr. Phillips' estate is, um, and your mother's brother lives in London. In which part of London is Grace Church Street, Jane? It would be comfort to know that it was all in pursuit of Mr. Bingley, and I. <laughs> and you know there is nothing for you at Netherfield. Oh no, indeed, Father. For I had much rather walk. Three miles in all that dirt you'll not be fit to be seen. I know, Lizzie. Lydia and I will set you as far as Meryton. Aye, let's call on Denny early before he is dressed. What shock he will get. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Miss Ben, on foot. Oh, yes. See? We must allow her to be an excellent walker, I suppose. I hope you saw her petticoat, brother. You observed it, I'm sure, Mr. Darcy. I did. It seems to me to show an abominable sort of conceited independence. Hmm? It shows an affection for her sister that is very pleasing. I'm I agree. afraid, Mr. Darcy, yes. that this... Yes, but they Jane were. But Jane Bennett is a sweet girl. Well, perhaps we should call when we are next in town. <laughs> <laughs> they would be just as agreeable to me had they uncles enough to fill all Cheapside. With such connections, they can have very little chance of marrying well, Bingley. Is she any better? I'm afraid that she's quite unwell, Mr. Bingley. I wouldn't hear of anything else. I'll mm -hmm. send to Longbourn for your clothes directly. Pause. So, do you see what happened with the girls? When Jane arrived, they began to grill her about her family. They wanted to judge her their pedigree. As much as they've dined in the same setting and attended the same party, they are all on different levels financially and even with like status. So the um, Bingley sister began to grill Jane, asking her question in spite of the fact that Jane was weak and tired and wanted to rest. She had been under the rain and had, you know, Horseback riding isn't very, if it's three miles, I don't know how long it took them to get there by horseback, but she clearly wasn't feeling well. He asked Jane about her mother 
and the mother's siblings, the brother's sister. What uh, Bingley's sister was saying in that moment was that Caroline Bingley was saying was that um, the people she was naming, Jane was naming, they had no pedigree. They were of no substance. They That her family wasn't up to par to the people that they should be communicating with because of as a woman she can clearly see what the mother what G, um jane's mother is mrs bennett is trying to do by pairing up her children to bingley and darcy bingley is just you know a kind person and he doesn't seem worldly in this it's that he's not catching up to what his sister is saying he's just wondering like why are you being rude why are you talking about the address about um elizabeth petticoat being in mud because she's walking and obviously that shouldn't be you shouldn't even see it and if you see it it shouldn't be dirty boots everything just you know they were talking about her mom how how it's unfortunate to be related to this woman and mr bingley's like why are you talking about her family like this what darcy now said is that what your sister is cunningly trying to get to you is that these girls are not your level because they don't have much of a dowry, they, their options are limited as to who they would marry. Having five daughters, five daughters born, none of their poor. At least this house that I'm seeing is even better than the one we saw in Pride and Prejudice with the other one. But they are not going to find suitable spouses or financially advanced spouses. <laughs> hey! oh my goodness the reason why i'm laughing is that how like more and more as i watch this thing can you really blame mrs bennett for wanting to pair up her daughters you can't this was a time where maybe it's even a shameful thing for a woman to have five daughters and not a man to take over the family estate and not only is it bad but what she was just trying to do with all her mind mrs ben was just trying to do was to make sure none of her daughters would have a life of want and lack and singleness and singlehood and just stress 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 for the rest of her days she, she was trying to secure the bag for to attach it to more more than language she was trying to protect her children she knew she had daughters she knew that they couldn't get jobs they couldn't what could they do other than marry into good homes so at least they could be catered to and taken care of because if your father died the same way the one in sense and sensibility the dashwoods leaving them with nothing what would mrs bingley do mrs bennett i mean what would she do she couldn't take care of five daughters. Are you kidding me? So what Darcy was saying said, listen, wake up, man. Your sister is trying to tell you that there's an agenda here. This woman is playing her cards right to get one of her daughters to be with you. Because he didn't say that directly, but he was saying that they're going to have difficulty finding suitors. And as a result, uh, Bingley is, is, is the option, is the way to for the girls to get out. See, she was so worried of her, about her sister. The girl was really sick. Mrs. Bennett did a lot. <laughs> she put the, she put Jane through a ringer. Like what? They got an infection or you know pneumonia or something. Oh, Jane, I'd much rather stay here with you. He's not mine, Mr. Bingley, is he? Oh, I think he is. Oh, he very soon will be. <laughs> very soon will be. <laughs> I believe you will find Mr. Bingley is in the drawing room. Okay. Oh, Mr. Darcy, come and advise me. For Mr. Hurst carries all before. I thank you. I believe she's a little better. I'm very glad to hear it. I thank you, no. You prefer reading to cards, do you? Singular. <laughs> Miss Bennet despises cards. She's a great reader and has no pleasure in anything else. <laughs> and what do you do so secretly, sir? 
Oh, dear Georgiana. Oh, how I long to see her. And so accomplished. Her performance at the pianoforte is exquisite. Speak French and German. Cover screens and I know not what. Who does not also possess a certain something in her air. In the manner of walking. Mm. In the tone of her voice. Mm. Her address and expressions. In the improvement of her mind by extensive reading. Improvement of her mind. You are very severe upon your sex, Miss Bennet. There are many very accomplished young ladies amongst our acquaintance. Mm. Oh. Oh. Caroline is... <laughs> she's tough. <laughs> Look, girls, is it not a fair prospect? <laughs> Miss Bennet, Miss Bennet and Miss Bennet, Miss Bennet. <laughs> this is the moment. But back to Caroline. That girl is... <laughs> a fanny. Are we to be Mrs. Bennet, you are very welcome. I hope you do not find Miss Bennet worse than you expected. Indeed I do, sir. She is very ill indeed and suffers a vast deal. Though with the greatest patience in the world. For she has the sweetest temper, Mr. Bingley. Miss Bennet will receive every possible attention, ma'am. I assure you. I believe I should be happy to live in the country forever. Wouldn't you, Darcy? <laughs> And unvarying indeed it is not, sir. Do I? Do I? He seems to think the country nothing at all. Have you seen Charlotte Lucas since I came away? Yes, she called yesterday with Sir William. Uh, Mr. Bingley, did you not promise to give a ball at Netherfield as soon as you were settled here? And when your sister has recovered, you shall name the day of the ball. Oh. You... That's what I call gentlemanly behaviour. <laughs> The shade, the shade she's throwing Darcy is <laughs> Miss Bennett is tough too. Oh my goodness. Let me persuade you to follow my example and take a turn about the room. It's so refreshing. <sighs> Will you not join us, Mr. Darcy? Take a turn. That would defeat the object. What do you mean, sir? What on earth can he mean? I think we would do better not to inquire. Why, that your figures appear to best advantage when walking and that I might best admire them from my present position. <laughs> Shocking! <laughs> How shall we punish him, Miss Eliza? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing so easy. Tease him. But it has been my study to avoid those weaknesses which expose a strong understanding to ridicule. Ooh. I have faults enough, Miss Bennet, but I hope they are not of understanding. Your defect is a propensity to hate everyone. Well, yours is willfully to misunderstand them. Ooh. Uh, shall we have some music? You hate everyone and you misunderstand everyone. And tell your father he's most welcome to come and shoot with us at any time convenient. Oh, goodbye. She didn't even get a moment to really engage with Bingley. It was actually Elizabeth that enjoyed this, this her sickness, because she got to banter with Darcy and, you know. Oh, how pleasant Eliza Bennett's pert opinions and fine eyes. <laughs> You're excellent, Mr. Bingley. I've never been so happy to leave a place in my life. Oh, is that the end of it? Oh. Okay, so let me tell you what I enjoyed about this part in, in comparison to... I'm going to go into episode two, but... You know that moment... Where do I begin? Um... In this part with the series, it seemed like Caroline Bingley was sort of an airhead, to be honest. Like, she wasn't very smart. She, what she had going for her was the, you know, the culture, being born with, you know, the silver spoon in her mouth, wealth and abundance. But this series painted her also as someone who wasn't couldn't really engage 
in meaningful conversation when put to the task. If she was being addressed or she was being mean to someone, her insults could only, were just based on shallow things, could only cut because she would say things like, oh, you're not well-dressed. You're not, you don't know how to engage when you're in high society. You don't but there wasn't depth to her conversation. There wasn't anything she said that made me go like, hmm, she's put much, much thought into this. As opposed to Elizabeth, whenever she, she rarely had conversations with the ladies because they really couldn't offer her anything. To, they weren't stimulating her mind. When she was pretending as if though she wasn't studious or, you know, when they were talking about women, accomplished women, it was... She was being sarcastic because she really is well read. She loves to read and reading is her personal escape to the world that she might not have access to in reality. So she she used that knowledge of reading to really go on a one on one banter with Darcy, that moment, um, Charlotte said, um, Caroline said, well, let's take a walk around the room so that Miss and uh, Mr. Bing and uh, Mr. Darcy said, oh, so it will defeat the purpose if I start walking with you because the whole goal for you doing this prancing that you're doing here is so that the men can really, and obviously it wouldn't be her brother that would be taking a look at her figure. It was so that she could be noticed. She realized that the first time she did it, she took a walk around the room, dropped her book and walked back to Darcy, leaned into Darcy. Darcy didn't raise his head. He wasn't interested. So what she did was probably she went back to Mrs. I think she was doing it. So at least Darcy would look up physically. Um, Caroline Bingley is, is very statu statuesque. She's tall. She's slim. You know, she's she's not bad looking at all, but when a man isn't interested in you, you can be a supermodel. If you're not, if he doesn't really find you attractive, there's nothing you can do. There are beautiful women who have married men and then the next day the man is looking for something completely opposite because originally he she was not his type. The moment she took on um, Elizabeth to do that walk around, you could see that Darcy raised his head and began to lean into. And when Elizabeth left Caroline and walked to stand in front of him, he never once tilted towards Caroline. He stayed focused on Elizabeth. Like, I love that in a sense. It just made, he made her the object of his affection and attention. She talked about, no, I'm not going to make you laugh. I'm going to be the one laughing at you. I'm not going to be your focus of entertainment. I'll let you vie for my, you know, be yourself for my entertainment. And then that banter began. Um, Elizabeth, I think in that scene, handled it poorly because I prefer the other scene because as much as she was, um, Kira Knightley was discussing um, with the actor in the, in the movie, what happened was that she was being nice about it and she was trying to get him to come out of his shell in that scene. But in this one, Elizabeth was not interested in getting him out of his shell. She was trying to delve into his mind and identify or let him know that you, he's a rude person, that she, that's how she sees him. And she was there, like, you, you are not better. She, she did try to protect him when her mother came out and was like, oh, you're this. And which surprisingly, because in the movie, Mrs. Bennett wasn't doing all that. She wasn't trying to, you know, critique him, but also we didn't see him walk off and Mrs. Bennet, when Mrs. Bennet was trying to introduce the daughters. But in this one, he did it. And in a way, I like that Miss Bennet called him out on it because you don't have, you, just because you're richer than me doesn't give you the right to disrespect me. And that was what, that is the point Mrs. Bennet was trying to make. She said, listen, yes, I know you're rich. I know you're famous. I know that your friend is Bingley. And yes, I know that I'm trying to get my daughters to meet you guys. 
But don't think for one moment that you can trample on me or trample on my rights or speak to me any sort of way because I'm somebody's wife. And you, I've met many accomplished men in high society. I might not be one. My husband might not be one. But you do not get to talk to us any sort of way. I'm glad that she st stuck up for her. She stood up for herself. Even playing into the obvious of letting her daughter still spend an extra day with um, the Bingley family. I think so. I think I think I liked the, seeing this part in the series where Mrs. Bennett st stood up for herself. I liked seeing that. I, you know, and I also noticed uh, Elizabeth's eyes when she was trying to caution her mom, like, oh, don't be too aggressive with him. This is his personality. This is who he is. He's not a bad person. You could tell that this was, that was, um, yeah, that, those are the other differences that I, I noticed. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think before I move on if there's anything else I would like to. The sisters, Lydia and Kitty, they're the same. They're the same. They're the same. Still doing the most. Still doing the most. And, you know, Mary too is the. <laughs> Even the other Mary. Mary in the movie was a little calmer. This Mary is like, listen, <laughs> I'm not part of this world, right? Has no interest whatsoever. Both Mrs. Bingley, Mrs. Bingley, uh, Mrs. Bennett, sorry, the bees, the bed of the, most Mrs. Bennett's are high peached, frantically excitable women. And I love it too. So um, <laughs> we're going to go into episode. I hope my dear, you have ordered a good dinner today. Lydia, my love, ring the bell. I must speak to Hill directly. <laughs> About a month ago, I received this letter. It is from my cousin, Mr. Collins, mm. who, when I am dead, may turn you all out of this house as soon as he pleases. Oh, my dear friend, oh. don't mention that odious man. I think it's the hardest thing in the world that your estate should be entailed away from your own poor. You may be a little softened by his manner of expressing himself. Okay always gave me much uneasiness and since i have had i have frequently wished to heal the breach there mrs bennett for having received my ordination at easter i have been so fortunate as to be distinguished by the patronage of the right honorable lady catherine de berg <laughs> <laughs> As a clergyman, moreover, I um, feel it my uh, duty to be highly commendable and will not lead you to reject the offer family on Monday the 18th. What is he <laughs> that but following, I shall travel oh, as far as the turnpike in my own, where, oh my God goodness. willing, you may expect me by four. Oh, I think not, my dear. Indeed, I have great hopes. You are very welcome. <laughs> Lady Catherine de Perg, I have been invited twice to dine at Rosings Park. The garden in which stands my humble abode is separated only by a lane. Oh, she has one daughter, ma'am, the heiress of Rosings, and of very extensive property. And has she been presented at court? And by that means, as I told Lady Catherine myself one day, <sighs> it is fortunate for you, Mr. <laughs> Collins, that whether these pleasing attentions <laughs> proceed the from the man. impulse of the moment, or are they the result of previous study? Elizabeth was the one who asked that in the movie. Just passing at the time, sir. Just little compliments as may be adapted to ordinary occasions. Uh, he's looking at. He's looking at. Gee. <laughs> and unstudied an air as possible. I, I like Collins. <laughs> I must confess myself quite overwhelmed. Especially the eldest, Miss Bennett. Ah, oh, yes, Jane is admired well. 
In their case, I know of no prior attachment at all. Ah, would Mrs. Bennet? <laughs> Cousin Elizabeth! You visit your Aunt Phillips in Meredith frequently, I understand, cousin. I believe I possess the happy knack, much to be desired in a clergyman, I flatter myself, to, to make a kind of art of it. <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful street. I wonder if this place really exists in London, like this. Yes, sure Where is this? Hiding. Jane, I'm determined to have this bonnet. Oh. Look, there's Denny! I think a man looks nothing without regimentals. Mm -hmm. They're looking over. <laughs> Lydia! Oh my goodness. Girl, oh, Lydia is. is... Ooh! Screaming. There was nothing amusing enough to hold us there. Allow me to introduce my good friend, George Wickham. Miss Bennett, Miss mm -hmm. Elizabeth Bennett, Miss Mary Bennett, Miss Catherine Bennett, and uh, Miss Lydia Bennett. I've taken a commission in Colonel Forster's regiment. It's only supper and cards, but we shall have some laughs. But if Mrs. Phillips extended the invitation to include me, I should be delighted. How very fortunate. Do you know we were just on our way to Longbourn to ask after your health? I hope you have a pleasurable time to have tea with us. So oh, look, there's Denny and Chamberlain. On my word, it reminds me greatly of the small summer breakfast room at Rosings. Rosings Park, we <laughs> must understand, is very grand indeed. Oh, indeed it is. Rosings Park is the residence of my noble patroness, Lady Catherine de Burgh. Oh, oh my God. Now I understand. So the <laughs> chimney piece in the second drawing room alone cost 800 pounds. Now I oh. see it's clear. Will you oblige me and sit down to a game of whist? I must confess I know little of the game, madam, but I shall be glad to improve myself <laughs> if my fair cousin will consent to release me. With all my heart, sir. <laughs> With all my heart. He keeps talking about this Catherine de Bourgh and her wealth and her... Like, stop. Of course, they wouldn't be interested in hanging around him. That's all he does. Reasonable personage. Miss Catherine. Collins! What the trumps again? Hearts. I must confess, I thought I should never escape your younger sisters. <laughs> I think some of Mr. Bingley's friends would consider it beneath their dignity. Darcy, love. Hmm. About a month. Yes, you're surprised. Are you much acquainted with Mr. Darcy? Very disagreeable. Oh, uh -huh, indeed. I fear there are few who would share that opinion. But I hope his being in the neighborhood will not affect your plans to stay. Oh, yeah. Not on friendly terms, but I have no reason to avoid him but one. His father, Miss Bennet, the late Mr. Darcy, was my godfather and one of the best men that ever breathed. But after he died, and the living he had promised me fell vacant. The son refused, point blank, to honour his father's promises. This is quite shocking. I had not thought Mr. Darcy as bad as this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have not the resentful temper that some men have. And my new profession gives me active employment. Of chasing women. My fellow officers are excellent men. You see, I absolutely forbid you to feel sorry for me. Because I have not had a dance these three months together. <gasps> Mr. Collins! This, this part... I cannot believe it, Lizzie. Mr. Darcy would have far too high a respect for his father's wishes to behave in such an unchristian way. Yes. And Lizzie, consider. How could his most intimate friends be so deceived in him? Mm. I believe you like Mr. Wickham, Lizzie. Mm. There is something very open and artless in his manner. Do you think we should believe in him so implicitly? Exactly. How could he be doubted? Because he gave me all the circumstances, Jane. Names, facts. If it isn't so, let Mr. Darcy contradict it. Besides, there was truth in all his looks. It is difficult indeed. It is distressing. Oh, girls, girls, yeah. we have all been invited to a ball at Netherfield. Oh, good, I love a ball. And so do I. Oh, this will be a compliment to you, Jane, you know. 
Uh, the invitation includes you, Mr. Collins. Given by a man of good character to respectable people, that I shall hope to be honoured with the hands of all my fair cousins during the course of the evening. Opportunity <laughs> of soliciting yours, Miss Elizabeth. Why was Mary leaning in? <laughs> <laughs> For the first two dances. Pause, pause. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to just um, say something here before, you know, because we keep progressing in the movie and I don't want to forget the series. I don't want to forget something. What I liked in that, in that um, dinner that we just saw was the moment um, Lydia took Wickham for a dance. You know, in the movie, we never really saw them interact one on one. We just saw her interact with her sisters and him and Claire, yes, but there wasn't much detail that we just saw. There was, it was actually, you know, Lydia who spotted him first, encouraged him to come. Yes, the sisters were, you know, they're more mature. They're showing their eyesights, looked at Wickham, engaged in conversation with Wickham. But Lydia is the... You know how sometimes your elder brother has friends and they come to see you and they don't take notice of you because you're like tiny. You're you don't they don't you're a child, not a child. You're a teenager, and as you grow older, these elder brothers still hang around, and you have a crush on one. That was what was what was happening with Lydia. Lydia had a crush on Wickham, and I'm seeing it clearly here when she's snatching him up to go dance. Um, Mr. Collins is still the same Mr. Collins with his speaking, his mannerisms. This actor is playing it so well and with look of disgust is 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 quite is still present. They're not hiding it, though the girls are giggling back and forth on and on. At the dinner table when Mr. Collins first arrived, in the movie it was um Elizabeth that said something with his with regards his tendency to always, you know, enunciate, use his sentence, um, speak so, speak with many words to express himself, you know, choose his vocabulary wisely. Like, is this a spur of the moment thing or do you have some pockets or sentences planned out for, for the day? But in this series, it was the father who asked him that question. That that conversation stood out to me because I really, I liked that he, I like the way Collins speaks. I like that he is a wordsmith and he finds even, he doesn't want to just say this is a beautiful place. He wants to say that the this environment is crystallized with lights and peace and a honey glazed aroma that I could you know he wants to do more than he's supposed to it can come as a result of studying the bible <laughs> over and over again and also in his profession maybe the way things are beautified maybe he likes reading too who knows right so I like that I also like seeing how Jane is Jane is sticking up for Darcy in the in the bedroom when she's dis it's something my father used to say about a reputation once destroyed is very easy it, it, difficult to repair. Reputation easily destroyed is very difficult to repair. And I say that because as an adult and with social media, although the, of course it didn't exist here. It was so easy to to ruin Darcy's reputation because he wasn't a person laughing and bantering with anyone. You know how quickly you are to think the worst of someone who isn't actively trying to defend themselves. They're just letting you say what you want to say. You, there's a tendency to believe that the people that are consistently talking, that they're saying the truth. And it, might, it, it clearly wasn't the case in this. Wickham was lying. He was lying about so so many things, but because Darcy already does not have the um, gift of gab and consistently just, you know, talking to people because he's, I wouldn't say introverted, but he's, he's who he is. He's not someone who takes to conversing with 
Tom, Dick, and Harriet are like, he doesn't, he's just, I'm good, I'm good. Well, Wickham is like a man about town. He likes to engage, he likes to talk to people. He's an extrovert, as you can see, but he wasn't t telling the truth. So um, I just like comparing both sides because like I said, I've watched the movie and I hope you don't mind that I pause and give it because I might forget something as we get towards the end. All right. Oh, hell, Mr. Wickham. Oh, oh, when oh. I tell you about the chimney piece alone. Her ladyship is fond of a good blaze then. Oh. Mary, she has found a passage in Fordyce's sermons that she cannot make out at all. <laughs> well, I, I... I believe it is a great doctrinal import, sir. In that case. You're very kind, sir. She's in the drawing room. <laughs> but I'm already disposed to approve of him. I wonder very much how Mr. Darcy could impose upon him. I wonder you can speak of him so tolerantly. He's not wholly bad. As a child, she was affectionate and pleasing and extremely fond of me. Your sister Lydia's age. Lydia is 15. Lydia is 15. I was amused by your cousin's reference to Lady Catherine de Bourgh. She is Mr. Darcy's aunt, you know, and her daughter, Anne, who will inherit a very large fortune, is destined to be Mr. Darcy's bride. Oh! Really? Ah, oh, you look very well, Lizzie. You'll never be as pretty as your sister Jane, but I will say you look very well indeed. Oh, Thank you, Mama. My God. And I hope you will pay Mr. Collins. Kitty says not, but I think it becomes me very well. I wonder that you ask me then. I have to dance at least the first two with Mr. Collins. Threaten. <laughs> he has threatened to dance with us all. Threatened. <laughs> oh my God, the lady's coming with her, her, her piano, right? Her musical book. Oh my goodness. This is Bennett. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Bennett. Oh, Mrs. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Oh my God, look at how she ignored, she ignored Jane. Miss Bennett. Oh, very nice of you, Bingley. She's looking for Wickham. I'm instructed to convey to you, Miss Bennett, my friend Wickham's most particular regrets that he's been prevented from attending. Yeah. Okay. I hope you've come. I'm quite enraptured. Quite enraptured. <laughs> He's admiring. All the way, Mr. Collins. Come, Mr. Collins. Oh, Mr. Collins. <laughs> oh my God. Come on, Darcy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Impossible. He pays you a great compliment in singling you out, Lizzie. That's a good advice. Not that money should matter, but it's still good advice. Like you should always test your options regardless of you're not married yet. You're not engaged. Wickham has made you no promises. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So Charlotte did give her good advice in that moment. Still have, you know. I might remark on the number of couples. <laughs> Darcy looking so stern. We're each of an unsocial, taciturn disposition. I'm willing. We're striking up conversation. Good. 
a manners that enable him to make friends, whether he's equally capable of keeping them. Please, be hey, Miss Lizzie. What a pleasure, sir. Capital, capital. What was the point of what you just said, Mr. Man? Who, to who told you? Forgave that your resentment once created was implacable. And never allow yourself to be blinded by prejudice? I hope not. May I ask to what these questions tend? Merely to the illustration of your character. I'm trying to make it out. This is the moment he invites her to get to know him better. I love it when he said that in the movie. It's like, oh, you get to know me better. I hope to afford you the opportunity. Is that what he said? Something like that. I would by no means suspend any pleasure of yours. Oh, woman, why are you eating like that? Mrs. Bennett. Lord. Was she a farm girl before she married Mr. Bennett? <laughs> Mr. Bennett married for love. So Eliza, I oh my but goodness. Eliza, as a friend, let me recommend you friend? not to give credit to all his assertions. Wickham treated Darcy in an infamous manner. Has he? I pity you, Eliza, for the discovery of your favorite's guilt. But really, considering his descent, one could not expect much better. His guilt and his descent appear by your account to be the same. I've heard you accuse him of being nothing worse than the son of Mr. Darcy Stewart, and he informed me of that himself. And he... Beg your pardon? Yes. And nothing you're telling me that Wickham didn't already tell me. So don't, no need to repeat whatever you re think you're repeating. Jane has come to caution her. Innocent again. girl. Lizzie. I see nothing in her portrait. Mr. Bingley did say that though he does not know the whole of the history, he fears that Mr. Wickham is by no means a respectable young man. Does he know Mr. Wickham himself? No, not at all. Oh, then he has had his account from Mr. Darcy. Caroline, can we persuade you? What kind of middle of the land collective? Is he playing again? Slow. <laughs> I was wearing my white. This is a boy of my white. Oh my god. Lizzie, look. Green bows. They haven't been introduced. Can we not prevent him? <laughs> Too late. Mr. Darcy. That? I understand that you are the nephew of Lady Catherine de Bourgh of Rosings Dear Park. Dear Lord, stop it, please. <laughs> but her ladyship was in the best of health. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the dogs? <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. It was, it was a clap. <laughs> Take her away before she plays something else. My no. Extremely well, child. You've delighted us long enough. Yes, sir, I am sure. In obliging the company with an air, indeed I should. Oh. Mr. Collins is such a sensible, respectable young man, and he's taken quite a fancy to Lizzie. And I don't think he could find a better wife. He favoured Jane at first, but Bingley was there before him. Now Ooh. there will be a great marriage. And of course, that will throw the girls into the path of other rich men. She's drunk. She's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> come kitty come along oh my god do you hear what the mother said at the dinner table will thrust her daughters into the sight of wealthy men because bingley oh my goodness gracious of course that is enough to offend believe me my dear miss elizabeth darcy but your modesty and your feminine delicacy may lead you to dissemble 
Treat your life. Stop <laughs> I am run away by my feelings on this subject. Violence of my affections. I remember that line. I hope he my sees it again. My reasons for marrying. Mr. Collins. <clears throat> That yes. I think it a right thing for every clergyman to set the example of matrimony mm. not brought up too high. Mm. Find such a woman as soon as you can. Bring her to Hunsford, and I will visit her. So much for my general intention in favor of matrimony. Now, as to my particular, satisfy myself without resolving to choose a wife from among his daughters. But to assure you in the most animated language, of the violence of my affections. <laughs> I love that line. I shall never reproach on that score when we are married. It is impossible for me to accept them. Because I am by no means discouraged, indeed not. But Upon my word, your hope is an extraordinary one in view of my declaration. You made a I Ooh. was perfectly serious in my refusal. I must attribute it to your wish of increasing my love by suspense. <laughs> that when sanctioned by your excellent parents. We are all in uproar. You must come and make Lizzie marry Mr. Collins. For mm -hmm. she vows she will not have him. And if you do not make haste, Mr. Collins will change his mind and he will not have her. I've not the pleasure of understanding you. Uh, of mm -hmm. uh, what are you talking? Speak to Lizzie about it yourself. Tell her you insist upon her marrying him. Your mother will not talk to you if you marry him, if you don't marry him, and I will not talk to you if you do. Something like that in the movie. That's what was said. I love that that moment. Her father, she's like, Papa. Oh, she's... I understand Mr. Collins has made you an offer of marriage. An unhappy alternative is before you, Elizabeth. Your mother. Mm -hmm will never see you again if you do not marry Mr. Collins. And, uh, and I, I, I will never see you again you. if, if you, you do. do. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bennett! Why, Charlotte, what do you do here? <laughs> Mr. Collins has made Lizzie an offer. And what do you think? She won't have him. I do not Mr. Collins! Oh, oh, Mr. Collins, wait! I wonder, should I invite him to dine with us this evening? He has been in high dudgeon all morning. <laughs> oh, was that how Charlotte got involved? Oh, is this how Mrs. Lucas, she came on the day she re... Oh. Oh, Mr. Collins. I am resigned. I take my leave. Oh, I love this. So this is how Charlotte got involved with the whole storyline. You know, they didn't let us see what happened, how she got um, the, the, in the movie. What we just saw was, um, and by the way, that moment the movie had where Kira Knightley was talking with her father and the actor says, if you, if you do this, you have to make um, with what do without talking with one of your parents if you, your mother will never speak to you again if you don't marry and I, that scene with Kira and her father was it Mr. Sutherland his name in the was much more packed with much more emotions from from Elizabeth than this one yes yes I prefer that scene because you could see that she could not, she, she was besides herself. Elizabeth in this moment was quite controlled. I'm not going to marry her. But in the other one, Kimmy Knightley was like a young child. She was like, please, somebody stay with me. She was really nervous. She couldn't, she couldn't stand. <laughs> Both Mr. Collins were amazing. Both of them were amazing. But in the other one, Elizabeth was truly, she didn't know what to do with herself. So it sort of revved up the emotion for me. At the moment that her father said that, the way he said it, oh, she just kissed him on his cheek, I think, and then was gone. And <laughs> and I, but in this part, I, what I like about this part is that she, uh, um, the story with regards Charlotte, Mrs. Lucas, her best friend, I like that, that they showed me this because it explains how a friendship was formed between her and... Mr. Collins, what else? God, when Mary was playing, please, Jesus wept. I was, 
I wondered what in the world, why? Why do this to yourself? But it was it was good the way her dad came up and took her away and then we got to see another person play. So in that stead, we could compare what the audience was expecting, the guests that the party was expecting as, to po as opposed to what they received. All right, my darling, I've watched episode one and two and the next one will be three and four. I hope you enjoyed my reaction and my comparison. On to the next.